All right, all right, man. We are live, ready to rock and roll with Mr. Kevin Hoover, man. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, not only to um, not only to have you know everybody that hopefully will follow the the podcast and and the Facebook Live get to know you, but to get to know you myself. Um, you know, obviously we're 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 a part of this great company here at EXP and. Um, you know, we feel like we're doing some really, really cool things. And, and, and certainly we would invite uh, not only EXP agents, but other agents um, across the United States and abroad to be a part of that. So um, really, the, the purpose of this platform is just to provide um, kind of an informational session for um, for agents who, who are maybe seeking a better way to do business uh, or just to learn a little bit more about EXP. And then also um, our EXP co-workers to learn more about, you know, uh, 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 each other. And so, you know, without further ado, uh, Mr. Kevin Hoover, welcome to the show. Uh, why don't we do this real quick? Uh, I don't want to get a lot into, you know, how long have you been into real estate and, and how you got into real estate, but so we'll just touch really briefly on that. Um, so why don't you just kind of tell in a, you know, in a, in a brief, um, in a brief synopsis, you know, how you got into real estate, how long you've been doing it. Uh, and then we'll go straight into, you know, kind of our uh, EXP stuff. Excellent, excellent. I've been, I started in real estate in New York City in 2006, so about 12 years ago. Um, 2008 came and I got out of real estate abruptly, <laughs> as a lot of people did, and then got back in um, about three years ago, uh, full time. So it's it's been a process of 12 years. Wow, okay. <laughs> so 12 years goes by in, in, in the blink of an eye. Yeah. So you were there yes. for, um, you were there for the tough times. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. It was, uh, I mean, it was a trying time for everybody. I mean, business changed literally overnight um, for a lot of people, myself included. Um, I was much younger and much more naive at the time, and it blindsided me. Yeah. Um, but on the on the back side of that, uh, learned the biggest lessons about business and about real estate that I, I probably wouldn't have learned otherwise. So, um, yeah. big exactly. picture, it's really helped. It seems like, you know, in the toughest of times is when we learn the most um, and, and when it makes the, the people who are really dedicated to their craft, um, those are the ones that ultimately improve because they learn from those lessons. So I, I would absolutely agree with you. So tell me this then, what, um, how is your business currently structured? Are you a, are you a solo agent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Lone Ranger. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the way I like it. I'm, I'm a little different than, than maybe a lot of people, especially with EXP, but um, I don't I have no interest in building, you know, a traditional team or anything like that. Um, and so I operate out of my house uh, in the cloud 100 percent solo. That's awesome, man. And, you know, that's a great thing about real estate is the fact that you can. It's not the same for everybody. In other words, like what I what I think of as someone being successful in real estate may not be um, in alignment with what you would think is successful. And, and what I want in real estate may not be what you want. And certainly. You know, that is the really cool thing. Um, you can do real estate at a high level and be a solo agent. You can do real estate at a high level and be, you know, a team. Um, you can be an in investing. So there's so many different things you can do. Um, so get from a production standpoint, what is what was your goal this year? I'll do between five and six million um, for my goal this year. That's pr pretty consistent. I got up to the point of, do of, you know, doing 10 or 12, but I have a three year old son and a wife and I like to spend time with them. So that's been a priority. So I Kind of reverse engineered and scaled it back a little bit and that's what i really like about uh, and not to segue into exp but that's what i really like about the model is that i can turn it up or down um as i need or as i want and yep. so uh, right now five or six million is my sweet spot that's kind of where i'm honing in gives me a lot of time gives me enough money and, and i can move forward in life that way yeah that's awesome and i would imagine there are a lot of people that are listening to this or watching this and they are right there in that you know four or five six million dollar range yeah. Um, and that certainly can provide a comfortable lifestyle. Um, you know, when you look at, you know, balance over uh, the life of a career, I mean, there's one, one end of the spectrum and then there's other, and, and, and that kind of falls right in into that sweet spot. I would especially um, uh, think so in, in that South Carolina market where the cost of living isn't super high. Um, no, it's cheap. <laughs> not here in, in Ohio either. So, okay, so you're at that five to six million dollar mark and, um, and so it's just you, you're, you're, you're kind of, um, I wouldn't say that, that Myrtle beach is, is a, is a luxury market, but it is certainly, um, I guess a large portion of it would be, uh, vacation homes or second homes and stuff like that. Correct. Yeah, very much. We're a second home market. Um, and really we run the gamut, you know, we have, 
you know, $50,000 condos. And then we have, you know, $10 million homes. Um, not a lot of them, but that's kind of the, the challenge with the second home market is that the buyers don't live here and most of the sellers don't live here. <laughs> and so, um, it, but it's so fun to work in and you get to see a big variety from client to client, which I really love. Uh, it's not the same thing every day. Absolutely. So where were you at before you moved to eXp? I was working for a small luxury brokerage, oddly enough, uh, here in Myrtle Beach. Um, we were, I mean, we were doing a small team of seven people, but um, doing about, projected to do about 69 million in sales among those seven people, um, doing a lot of new development and, you know, model homes and things of that nature. And that really shifted my focus of leveraging my time and how do I do that? And what is this cloud-based brokerage thing? And, you know, how does this model work? Um, yeah. steering away from traditional models where, you know, you have an office and you, you sit on site and you take your turn in the rotation and you uh, go to the training and you <laughs> have all the meetings and everything like that. Um, and so that the segue from that to EXP was something that I had actually sought out. And I said, Hey, I want to be sort of by myself. I don't really, I don't really want to go to meetings unless they're vital or important, or, um, you know, I don't want to sacrifice time for a meeting if I don't have to. Um, and I kind of want to build layers of income. And that was, that was what drew me here, really. So I'm, I ask this question to everybody, and I, I feel like um, you know everybody reacts differently when they hear about something. Um, you know, there 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 are early adopters. There are um, certainly people that um, do more research than others. Um, where do you fall into that um, kind of that gamut? Are, are you one that like when you heard about it, like you knew this was it and you needed to make the change, or you heard about it and I mean, I've talked to some people that, you know, heard about it and they didn't change for a couple of years. And I've talked to people right. who heard about it and they immediately moved. So where do you fall in that spectrum? I'm, I'm kind of right in the middle. Like, I think it took me two months to really go from the first time I heard about it to really entertaining it as, as you know, my thing. But I, I remind it like I knew a guy in New York when I lived there and he was a an admin assistant or something for Google. And then fast forward 10 years and he was able to retire with seven figures in the bank with because of stock options. <laughs> and so I was reminded of that story and I thought, well, you know, I don't want to drag my feet too much on this um, because I believe in it. And it was just checking a lot of boxes as far as what I was looking for as a company. And so, uh, so it didn't take me really very long. I really convinced my wife longer than I convinced myself. <laughs> so I was uh, you know, telling her all about it and everything like that. And it was, um, I, I think it was very quick after that. I see a lot of people, I see the same thing you do though. I see people who take years, people who maybe have a big team and they're moving the whole team over or um, they want to understand more about how it works. And it takes a little time for that, but I very much go with my gut and my gut was telling me a lot of really good things. So talk about that moment then when you first heard about it and then um, kind of the, kind of the, the emotions or um, the reactions you had and, and kind of what you went through from that moment when you heard about it and then doing your due diligence and then to moving. Um, I got really excited when I first heard about it and I didn't know enough to know why I was excited. I just knew that I was excited because it sounded like a really um, cool thing for me. You know, I'm a video guy and I'm, I like tech and I like new things and I, I very much like anything that's against traditional business. Um, and so this was very interesting to me. And then as I got in and started to learn about the applications and the, the you know, EXP world and everything that goes along with it, um, I got even more excited and that's not even talking about the, the income opportunities, but, you know, just the, the, the technology and the grouping and how you meet people all over your state and all over the country. And um, so it, as I dug deeper, I was like, wow, this is really, this is pretty cool stuff that I'd like to be a part of. And that's really where it came for me because I was building another business, I was building a coaching business and everything like that. And this just fits right into what I'm doing as well as writing and stuff like that. So it's just natural match for me. Yeah. I, I, I did want to touch on that because I did think that was really cool. And I didn't even know this until I started to do a little research myself, but you're a contributor at Inman. So talk yeah. about where did that, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's funny, but I'm a big, I'm a big believer that, you know, when you meet people, you just never know where they're from. So I was at a conference in Miami, a coaching conference and uh, connected with a few people. And one of the ladies there that I connected with knew the editor. She knows in real estate. Um, and I helped her out a little bit, I guess. And she said, well, I'd, I could connect you with the editor over at Inman if you're interested. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a go. Um, and then you, you have to submit. They don't just say, okay, you're published. <clears throat> you have to submit. So I submitted a piece and she really liked it. 
uh, and published it. And then we just kept a really good relationship for probably the last 12, 18 months. Um, and now we're getting to the point of them actually asking me to do uh, pieces for them. So it's been really cool. I mean, they are so, such great people at Inman and, and my connection there was just, I wasn't looking for it. It just kind of found me and I ran with it. Yeah, that's huge, man. I think that's yeah. great for um, not only for the articles that you're producing, but also for your own credibility. I mean, I, I think that, you know, that that overflows into actually the consumers that you're working with, too, and and certainly giving you that um, that that authority and that credibility. So kudos to you, man, for putting that together. That's been awesome. Thank you. I was pumped about it. I was surprised a little bit, but you're right. I, I use it. It does give me a little bit of a leg up when I start sharing an opinion about real estate. <laughs> Well, good for you, man. So, so okay. So, when did you actually move over to EXP? It is almost a year to the day. It was September first last year um, that I officially pulled the plug and moved over to EXP. Um, and I've spent the last year figuring it out, figuring out how it works with my business. And um, and this year will be a big initiative is to start building people around me um, for EXP. So it's it's been a great year. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I'm glad that, I, I love the fact that you have been here for almost a year because I think what that will, I think for, at least for me, I've been here since February and I think for you, now you have a year under your belt, you're able to kind of look back over those last 12 months and say, you know, um, here's kind of what I figured out. And, and obviously, so there was that day that, you know, you decided to move to the, to the moment that you actually moved and now you're 12 months in. So talk about like, Talk about your experience over the last 12 months and um, what, what problems or challenges has EXP solved directly for your business, if any at all? And then, um, well, first, what, I'll just let you comment on that. Um, well, you know, when I got in, there was 4,000 agents and that's not a long time ago. I think now we're 17,000, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, and so, so that, that kind of growth that quickly, I knew there was gonna be bumps in the road and challenges for us as a company to overcome. And my experience with that is as soon as something comes up, they're right on top of it. Like the, my, my broker, all the people that work in, in that front, all the people at corporate and just, I don't even like saying corporate with this company, but you know, all the people that are trying to make this a seamless process have been right on it. And they are also seeing opportunities that I don't see from the ground level um, that they present my way. And I'm just, oh, wow, that does make things easier. Um, a lot of things happen with the CRM uh, that, that's provided. Um, the process of actually the online transaction with Skyslope, a lot of updates on that that have just made things really seamless going forward to communicate with people. Um, those have been the real, the real challenges that have been overcome since last year, I think. Um, and, and then it's just, it's a matter of understanding that companies that are young, that grow very quickly, um, have to have cheerleaders and have to have people that are out there, you know, just chugging away and, and going after it. Right. And, um, and that's kind of where I, I f saw my role. I said, you know, I'm, this is going to work out. They're not going to, it's not going to go downhill. This is only going up. I believe in it. It's for me. And I'm just going to do what the work it takes to, to help them any way I can. That's awesome, man. So the, the question I, I like to ask everybody too, is that, you know, there comes that day when, you know, you say, okay, I've, I'm doing it right. You're saying I'm making the change, but then there's that one little, issue, right? Then you got to go tell your broker, right? And um, so I'm always curious because, you know, for us, you know, we've made the change and we're on the other side of that and we've moved down the road. But for that individual who maybe hasn't made the change yet, who uh, maybe has a great relationship with their broker, right? They maybe even developed a, a friendship. And and so how do we like, what what do you say to that person? Uh, or how do you what, what advice can you give them to approach their broker or their manager? Um, to, to, you know, to, to tell them, you know, about what they're thinking about doing or what they have already decided to do. That's it's tough. It is tough. And um, it was tough when I did it and I suspect it'll always be tough, but I, it's a business decision. Uh, it just is. And when you make a business choice, there are two things that have to be involved in one that has to benefit you, your family or your people or your, your direction. And two, it has to be sensitive to someone else's needs. So when I decided my business, I wanted to look a certain way, I looked at my broker and what he was expecting of me and hit, it wasn't matching. And so my decision was one, it's not fair for me not to live up to their expectations of what they need out of an agent. And it's not fair to me or my family for me to try to mold into something that I just, that doesn't match my life. Um, so, so I went in and I had a very, it was a very heartfelt discussion. It was very honest and very open. 
And I find that to be the best policy that if you are moving for a reason and you can explain that reason. Um, and sometimes the explanation is just, I'm sorry, you know, it's, it's time for me to go. Yeah. You know, I, and that can be, a, that's a valid excuse for me. It was, I couldn't be the agent they needed me to be. I couldn't sit on site on weekends, you know, two weeks a month because I have a son and play soccer and I want to be there for those. Um, so, so it just really became, I want to be fair to you. I want to be fair to me. And this is the choice I've made handshake, no hard feelings. Um, I know a lot of people with EXP that it's not been that way. It's been, I've made a choice because I believe this to be best for me and, and my business. And that's that. Um, and, and that it goes, it goes a lot of different ways. I think if you address it from an empathetic standpoint and, and from a place of, I'm trying to look out for both of us uh, in, in this equation, but I have made a decision and I'm firm in that decision, then there's nothing but respect can come across the table at you. Um, it's all in how you approach it. Yeah, and I, I find that, you know, and, and it doesn't happen this way all the time, you're right. Um, like I was with Keller Williams and, um, you know, we were actually, we were getting ready to open our own market center uh, when we found out about EXP. Um, and, and so the only reason I tell you that is because when we went to the group that we were working with and told them that we were, you know, are we, are we decided to move? Um, it was like, um, well, we're sending your license back to the state. You know what right. I mean? It was like, and so we had to hustle like really quickly. Um, they didn't give us any time to, to, I think they handled it poorly. I think they could have handled it better. I don't think that that's Keller Williams culture, so to speak. Right. Um, but culture only goes as far as the people at the brokerage locally. You know what I mean? So completely. And I don't think that they necessarily reflected Keller Williams culture. Um, so our, our, our move was a little more challenging. Um, and so I, I think probably somewhere, you know, it sounds like your move was like, maybe you, I don't know if, if, if I could necessarily say that, you know, you, they were in complete support of you leaving. Uh, but it sounds like that they were like, you know, okay, yeah, we get it, you know? And what I've found is that if you've truly built a relationship with somebody or a friendship and, you know, you've decided that this is what's best for you and your family and your business moving forward, that if it is a true friendship or a true relationship, that they will support you in whatever decision you make, whether it includes staying at their brokerage or moving on to EXP or any other brokerage for that matter. Right. Yeah, I agree with that 100 percent. And I think that was just, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I left behind a million dollars in listings, but um, that was client choice. I had, you know, work in the luxury market. I had to, I wanted to serve them first and I was prepared to take that as giving them a choice of staying with the, the brand of that company or coming over with me. And no one knew EXP at that time in my market. Yeah. You know? And so there were, there were lumps, but I was, I had prepared myself to take those lumps because that's just the right thing to do, not to fight that and not to combat that, but to quickly regroup and move on. Just probably like you did with, you know, when you left. That's all we can do, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to, I want to rewind back a little bit um, because um you know, you mentioned the opportunity to to um, build long term wealth, um, and 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 I know what you're talking about there. But talk a little bit about what long term wealth means to you, and how that relates to being at EXP. Well, I think you know, it's really easy for someone in real estate to build a real estate job, and it's really more challenging to build a real estate business. And the way I differ differentiate those two is if you have to show up every day. Uh, and, and nothing happens without you there, then you've got a real estate job. Right. And if you are able to leverage your time and maybe have some verticals in your business that create passive income or investment opportunities, then you've really geared yourself more towards a business. Um, so with EXP and we, you know, we can say the word, the revenue share part and the, uh, the stock options and the stock, you know, the, everything that goes into that, it looked like something I was interested in that was a long play that wasn't hinging on, um, anyone else other than me doing my job and, and trying to build a business and a brand uh, for myself with EXP in my market. And, um, and it just made perfect sense. And I got really excited about the, the opportunity to invest in the company that I work for um, first and foremost, because I think that's important. Um, and then I also got the opportunity to invest in, in people. And I intentionally waited a year to kind of see how the inner workings work um, so that if anyone wants to come into that world, then I know a little more and I can help them better. Um, and as far as, you know, the culture of EXP, because there is a very unique culture there with the, 
Um, I think creating my avatar was the coolest thing <laughs> that I did, but it was a, it was a shift. You know, most people go in and decorate their desk and I, I had to go in and pick out the shirt that's on my avatar, which is cool. But um, so that's really how I look at it as the three verticals that I use for creating long-term wealth is obviously selling houses, um, selling real estate and property, um, the revenue share program, bringing people into our company that will succeed and, and produce and then also um, investing back into the company through the stock option program. Yeah. And what's so great about it. And I think what, why I'm so passionate about it when I talk to people is the fact that, you know, we're still doing exactly what we did at Keller Williams, but yeah. now we've just added in these two other layers uh, of, 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 of producing, you know, passive income. And I just like, you know, Profit share uh, was one thing, um, and I'll, I'll be completely candid. The biggest profit share check I ever got was like three hundred and thirty-six dollars. You know what I mean? And um, you know, I've being at EXP. I think the the fourth month we were here, I had a check that was ten times that. You know what I mean? Literally in my fourth month. And so um, I don't say that to boast or to brag. I'm just trying to provide some um, some context for the the what we're talking about, what you and I are talking about the type of opportunity that's at play here. And so like you can literally in your own business, move your business over, do exactly what you were doing at your other brokerage and make more income. And yeah. that's not even talking about commission splits or fees or anything like that, right? We're not even right. into any of that. And um, so I think that, you know, you know, obviously, hopefully there there is that agent out there that, you know, is starting to understand what we're talking about and they don't want to be a real estate agent for the rest of their life. They don't want a job. They do want to create some passive income. And, um, and, and those are the type of people I think both you and I are talking to right now. Absolutely. Let me ask you this then. Um, what, what do you think? So you're a year in now. You've got 12 months under your belt or almost. What does what does your future look like at EXP? You think now that now that the dust is starting to settle for you? But well, that, that's funny you say that because uh, I was talking about that with my wife last night, and uh, I I love the way it looks. You know, I think um, obviously doing sales uh, is has to be the lead of all that um, for me. So it's it's that's going to be the lead of everything with EXP is selling property, but also helping people build their business with EXP. Um, bringing people into into my world and kind of sharing the ideas that I have and the, the experience I have, can, it kind of just becomes this um, really great, you know, secondary help center, for lack of a better phrase, um, for some real life interaction and so and some just real, you know, from ground zero experience, you know. And I think that then you look at the long term, you know, the 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 opportunity to help clients and other agents. And also to have a community uh, with other like-minded agents, that's vital. And I think that's where I was drawn the most is that I get to talk to people like you who we, we just, we agree on the principles of business and where we want to go. We saw an opportunity. We saw a vision. We saw something that was deeper than just uh, going out knocking on doors or sending postcards or, or selling, you know, a hundred properties a year. Um, we saw an opportunity that was deeper than that. And it also had exit strategies. It had uh, a lot of layers that traditional businesses have that we, I just couldn't find anywhere else in real estate at least. That's awesome, man. And, and so, you know, that agent who's, or that broker who's listening to us or watching us right now, um, who's thinking about, you know, making a change or, or, or has decided to make a change to EXP or, or, well, I guess not decided, but that agent who knows there's a better way to do business. Let's just say mm -hmm. that. What, what do you, what is what is a piece of advice that you could give that agent to to um, them about EXP? I've got a ton of advice about this. <laughs> um, you, you know, I think I think agent when I talk to agents or brokers and I talk to a lot of them um, daily, um, I think they overthink it that, you know, it's it, it's not a new business. It's just a new version of the mo of a model. It's not a new concept. You know, the, the core principles of real estate are the same no matter where you go. But if you get the feeling in your gut and normally people know within the first five or 10 minutes, whether they're, they want to do it or not. And then they spend a week, two days, a year, two years, even talking themselves into it or out of it. And my advice is that the, the sooner you can get to it and convert over and start going forward in your new way, the better. 
And that's really where I got to. I got to a point of, and literally it happened in a couple of days where I was like, I knew. And then I was like, I'm just wasting time at this point. Right. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm really just wasting time. Everything adds up. Everything looks good. Everything looks is verifiable. Everything that I, I see on paper, I can also see in real life by connecting with other agents across the country. And so then it got to the point, it was kind of like, what are you waiting for? Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's like asking the girl to dance at the, at the middle school dance. It's like, you know, what's she's going to say yes or no. Like, and, and you know that right from the start. And so that's probably right. a very bad analogy, but. Um, no, well, so, it's, what it's like really is it's like, it's like, it's no different than, um, you know, running a real estate business, right? You, if, if, if you, if you get into real estate, you don't know what you don't know. But once you start to learn things like lead generation, um, you know, uh, time blocking, all those uh, integral pieces to running a successful real estate business, if you know them and don't apply them, then, you know, it's it's shame on you. It's like, you know, when are you going to take action? And it sounds like that's what you did. It's like once you decided or once you knew that EXP was a fit for you, then you just knew that at this point you were wasting time unless you took action and moved. And so ultimately that's what you did. Yeah. And it was a very, I think I, my wife and I decided one day, the next day I went and talked to my broker and then, you know, whatever, however much time it took the stake to get things together. That's when I was, um, yeah, I was over. But I think, I think that's, that's the, I think a lot of agents are looking for something that either says um, this is different or this is the same, you know, and, and that's, that's kind of the, the overthinking part and what, you know, what it really is. It's, it's a real estate company. <laughs> it's just not your traditional model. And, um, the, the sooner you can get in, the sooner you can explore what it is and continue working and continue building. And a lot of the options that we have at EXP are actually better than most of the other companies. So yeah. you, that's you can, the cherry on top, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the funny thing is too, it's like when you, like for me, when I, when, when I told you, like we're still doing the same thing we did at Keller Williams, it's just, we've added these additional layers of uh, passive income opportunity. It's like, you know, that is a big piece of it. But man, think about it this way. I mean, I, and I know this has to resonate with you because isn't part of you excited about the opportunity to get in on the ground floor? And we're still on the ground floor. I mean, mm -hmm. 14, 15, 16, 17,000 agents uh, where you talk about a company like Keller Williams, 170,000 agents, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the people that I looked up to at Keller Williams, uh, like a Linda McKissick, who was making over a million dollars a year in profit share, they all got in early. They got in early like we're getting in early. So we all see this opportunity, right? And we want to be those people at, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years, we're seeing those same type of residuals. And so that that gets me really excited is to be a part of something so special and get in on the ground floor. Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, that's the difference in people being a part of the story and reading about the story, you know, and it's all when you get in and, when you have confidence in it and when you have faith in it, when you have confidence in yourself to, to, to jump over and just, and work it. And I think every big company that has come across the, the stock market in the last, you know, 20 years, that's made it big uh, as the early adapters have been the ones who also created the legacy financially and for the company long-term, you know, and that's uh, it's remarkable. I, I'm reminded my, my grandfather got the opportunity to buy stock in a, I don't know if it's regional, but it's a, grocery store chain called Food Lion. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the guy knocked on his door. He lived in North Carolina, knocked on his door and said, uh, we're selling stock for the small grocery stores, 50 cents. And my grandfather said, no, no, no. And we, my dad and I did the math. And if he had, you know, paid the guy some money, it could have been like, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'm always reminded of that too. It's like, you know, the guy came, he wanted a hundred bucks. You give that guy a hundred bucks and fast forward 30 to 40 years. And that's all of a sudden 22 million or something. Like, At least he wasn't selling Microsoft stock. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so it's, for me, it's, it's kind of like that. It's like, okay, I can do the things I've been doing already and still make a living and not worry about it's not my, all my livelihood is not tied to revenue share or tied to the stock options or tied to anything else. I can still just do business as usual. On top of that, I'm adding a couple other things that if I utilize them correctly, they can really make a difference in my, me and my family's life. Absolutely, brother. Well, hey, let, thank you so much, Kevin, for letting me steal oh, a couple you. minutes out of your day. Um, how can people connect with you if they have questions about, you know, how you run a business or or EXP? Uh, Facebook's good uh, or Facebook or e email's good. Kevin at KevinHoover.org. Um, either one of those are the best way to get me. 
Awesome, man. Well, thanks again, brother. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you at EXPCon in October. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate you. Bye, brother. Thanks.